bit naughty, Yeah. Should we get some red one and some yellow one? Yeah. Hello, YouTube friends. Hello, YouTube friends. Hello YouTube friends. Where? Mum is on the mend from her vertigo. Um, last week John and Anna posted a video of them in on their holidays in the Western Isles and around at the top of Scotland. And we're just gonna give her a little bit more time to get herself feeling well again, aren't we, Agnes? We've been going to see her a lot and she is doing okay. But you know, I don't know how many of you have had Vertigo, but it's a bit of a, it knocks you out a little bit. And although you're actually, you know, physically all right, that balance stuff is quite, it's quite tricky. So she's been in bed and hope by the time we post this video, she's not in bed anymore. I can imagine if she is still. How would I do cucumber? You want a little cucumber? You've got a big cucumber here. How would I do? A little cucumber, a little white one. Yeah. <gasps> These are good ones. These are a bit spiky though, aren't they? So we have to rub the spiky, spiky prickles off. Yeah, it's a good one. So mum, um, she got a question on a video a while ago about what allotments are, because she'd been talking about mine and ours. And Which one? we thought we'd do... Which one off? That's off, isn't it? Get it off. Off, off, off. There, it's really clean now. And we thought we'd do a video about, yeah, about that really. We um, oh. have an allotment here where we live, oh. in our village. They're all off. Are they all off? Yeah, they're all off. Look, that's good now. You can see the seeds inside. We've had an allotment here for a year and about half. We got it in May last year. And um, allotments are, I don't know, I think they are a thing in other European countries, but they're a very particular thing to Britain in this sense, in that you are allotted a plot of land if you want it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good snack of cucumber, isn't it? Ne um, it's usually near your house. Some people's really isn't. They can you know, a proper bus ride or, or train ride away. Um, but ours, thankfully, is about five minutes walk. And it's up on the hill above our house. Um, and what else is there to say about allotments, love? Um, in this allotment site, there's about 30 plots. So we're here in a space that was made into new allotments because of the demand for more last year out of just a field that um, someone kept their horses on previously um, but there's been some on this site now for 30 plus years our next door neighbours have has one that's massive that she's had for nearly that long um, a full size allotment is pretty big mum could tell you there's a there's a very traditional measurement of, of rods poles and perches which is very imperial um, and yeah must relate to something very ancient but ours is a, not a full size but a half size allotment plot which is still plenty big enough for us, the small family that we are more than big enough we um really just grow too much veg <laughs> but um i've been gardening for a very long time i suppose gardened with mum when she was when i was young at her house uh, they had a big veg plot there um but really i think it's it comes from granddad my mum's dad was an absolutely incredible gardener. She put these ones in my hand. They're really nice, those little ones. Can you find an orange one? Yeah. We've got some good orange ones. Grandad was an incredible gardener. Grandad um, always gardened. He was in the fire service, my grandad, in uh, Lancashire, sort of near Manchester, around that sort of area. Um, and was ambitious in the fire service, had climbed up the ranks of being a fireman, but always had a plot. I'm not sure an allotment, um, whether it was away from his house or whether it was, um, I think more it was gardens um, in the places where they were. He kept bees as well, he kept bees all over the place in different plots. Um, but he, when they retired, him and Nana took on a massive area, two acres, with uh, big commercial glass houses and grew loads of stuff. So when I was Agnes's age and up to when I was about eight or nine, they were gardening on this absolutely huge um, piece of ground, um, growing growing commercial scale when they were first retired, growing for supermarkets, some lettuces and stuff. But he he grew just to see if he could. That was that was part of Grandad's kind of um, 
pleasure in it was to see if he could grow a melon or to see you know how if he could grow more than 17 different varieties of fruit he was a uh, competitive with himself not with other people that wasn't his, his thing but he was and he won always wanted to see if he could do it better next time so yeah that was the that was the background of my growing and then i wasn't you know you, you're a kid you're just doing stuff with your parents and you kind of have to it was part of the chores of the house um i wasn't massively into it as a kid but when i came back to gardening as an adult it, i realized all the skill was there all the all the knowledge maybe not the skill because the skill builds up but a lot of the knowledge was already there from years of doing it with granddad and with mum and so now yeah back to this plot we um, rent this the um, allotments are there's always like a nominal rent for them changes a bit site by site and ours is 60 pounds a year which is what do you say it was 80 dollars in, in american money 80 dollars which feels like a bargain really for the amount of joy and pleasure and produce that this gives us so we pay that by check it's all extremely old school by post to some guy i've never met um who lives there there's always, the other thing there's there's always a committee in a, of an allotment um a, a decision making and your money goes towards things like paying for water so we can have a hose pipe that we um put into here into the tunnel to water or you know we're that, that's uh, there's no limit on that restriction i'm just going to go and see where she is Pulling the stalks off tomatoes that are in a basket outside the door. That's good. There's, Agnes loves being up here. It's a really easy place to let her wander around and to eat things. She eats way more vegetables up here than she ever eats with us at home. So that's quite good. Um, what were we saying about, oh yeah, you pay your dues and that goes into sort of infrastructure. And I'm not sure what it goes into on this site. You never really see the kind of, it's, it's, some sites are way more communal than this one in there management but this is communal in it's just that every time we walk up the path to come here you'll bump into somebody chatting about something but you know all the people don't you are you eating a bean can i have that bean we've been growing some really good beans for drying this year they're getting a bit getting a bit hard now aren't they but agnes has been nibbling away at them all summer long this is a bolotti bean yeah yeah with good, really, really beautiful markings on the outside. That is a little bit like a, like a bird's egg. It's really good. But we're telling the YouTube friends about allotments, aren't we? Do you want to go and show the YouTube friends your bean? It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about allotment committees, and we're talking about allotment plots and what they are and what they mean. And a lot, each allotment has its own set of rules. Each committee's made those rules. And some are pretty hardcore. Ours is not at all. But some will have like a specified percentage of your ground that must be to vegetables. And you're not allowed to grow flowers. Or you're not allowed to have a structure above a certain height. or such. You know, people like rules, right? But this one's fine. You're not allowed to grow for commercial purposes, I believe is our rule. Or have a cockerel. Crucial. You are allowed to have hens though, which we don't, because that's just another thing to look after at the moment. Yeah. Are you looking at the video? Daddy's doing the video, isn't he? Yeah, so I wonder what else you'd, if you didn't know about allotments, you'd want to know. Yeah, I suppose we, um, Adam was pointing at the tunnel, we put up this polytunnel this April after having been on the allotments for not quite a year. And this has made this has made a huge difference. We are in we're about forty five minutes from Mum, um, on the outskirts of Newcastle. And although we are a lot further um, yeah. down the hill from her, we're a lot lower. We're in the river valley. So the, the Tyne, which is the river going into Newcastle, is getting really big at this stage. We're on the kind of the very end of the tidal reach of the Tyne. And so we're low, we're not, you know, not not that far from sea level probably. But we do get hard frosts. We're still in the north of England. We're still growing in... Actually, Americans... Like, the American system of, of um, zones is quite interesting, which is not one that is that relevant to the UK because we only have a few, not the sort of 
many many that uh, that you guys have sometimes over there but um we are in zone 8 a 8b one of those so kind of like pretty temperate but getting chilly so we we're on a, in the marginal places for growing stuff like sweet corn uh, tomatoes for us we can't do outside so we've got this tunnel which has been amazing for having this tomato crop there's no leaves on them anymore because um, tomato blight is a um, fungal disease that strikes late in a damp year there's a bucket and it's been a pretty damp year so we get a lot of rainfall that's quite good it's been dry for a few weeks but <laughs> uh oh that is going to be very mucky on your head <laughs> you got a hat on now yeah, it's nearly bath time, guys. So uh, this is not that big a deal. She just gets mucky up here. It's pretty good. Um, we're talking about this tunnel, which has been a game changer for being actually able to grow stuff here. Because we can grow cabbage and potatoes, and we can grow. You've seen some of the stuff we've done, made made some shots of, like some of the outside stuff. But the insides are peppers. We've never grown peppers before. Our cucumbers have been incredible this year. Ha, daddy. Ha, <laughs> daddy. Agnes has eaten so many cucumbers, haven't you? You've been munching, munching, munching cucumbers all summer long. your wine. Cheers Agnes. Cheers. <laughs> what have we got then? We've got beetroot, leeks, pink potatoes, cabbage and stuffing. Yes. Because we don't eat meat so we don't need any meat. Pepper. Do you want some pepper? A little bit. Potatoes. Mm. Let's have a look inside there. Oh yeah. Fries. It's a variety called Red Heidi. Heidi. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Chin chin. Cheers, Agnes. Yeah. Cheers. We're having Sunday lunch, which is a pretty important tradition. Cheese. This is cheese, yeah. Have you got some cheese with your Sunday lunch? Sunday lunch is a roast dinner, really, isn't it? 
with meat usually, but we don't have meat, so we have all the vegetables instead. And gravy. Gravy is an important part of Sunday roast. <laughs> and Anna makes the best gravy with onions and mushrooms and butter. Yeah, butter's, butter's the best. Butter? Mm hmm. Put a, bit, put a bit of butter on all the vegetables. We also go around the pubs of the area trying the different Sunday lunches to see who's is the best. No washing up. Exactly. And in lockdown, they were doing takeaway Sunday lunches, which might have been the best thing ever. Hmm. Who's on the best? <laughs> Most of your Sunday lunch goes Shall in the panda. Hair. Yes. Show me panda. Who's panda? Show me panda. What did you do? Show me panda. Why do you have to apologise to panda? Show me panda. So we're sitting in our polytunnel on our allotment and it's the end of a season here for us. It's nearly October when we're filming this and so this is this is a kind of quite a still bountiful harvest but it's the tail end of the, our growing year really um, of the summer. So we picked loads of stuff today for a big um, Sunday roast. We don't eat meat, so it's all about the veg here. Mm -hmm. So we picked our first big savoy cabbage and lots of beetroot, yellow and purple, and leeks. And we've had a good harvest of potatoes that we we're storing in sacks down at the house. Anything else? I can't remember. Probably. Um, but we cooked that all up earlier on, and so that was our Sunday roast. And we've sh taken lots of shots of around the garden to show you guys what's growing at the moment and it really does feel like the end of summer here like it's, it's yeah, autumn really cucumber. you got your cucumber <laughs> we've had a lot of cucumbers for agnes that's her favorite but yeah it's um i don't know we've talked a little bit about allotments kind of what they are these kind of quite universal gardens that um you can um, apply to to have some places the waiting lists are so long and some places like here it's fairly quick to get one and it's just such an important space for us our house is quite small our garden's quite small to overflow into not just to grow all this stuff what are you doing with this label can i have this label oh no soily cucumber just eat the good bit now should we snap it there clean Haha. okay good bit um yeah it's just really important for us to have this extra space i think to and for her to be able to do this, eat dirty cucumber. And so we love it here. And I don't know, there's something, are you gonna get another one? You've got this one. This is a very good one. Oh, that's quite a good one, but this one's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, ask loads of questions about allotments and we'll, we'll definitely help you answer them. And I'll help Anna in with the comments to see if we can cover anything. I'm sure I've forgotten loads of stuff because I'm not really as used to mum as to talk to the camera. Don't stand on my lettuces, love. But sometimes the boards and stuff around here just really as sort of Agnes barriers. I don't want you to stand on the lettuces, please. Because the lettuces are important for the winter. Friends. Bye bye, YouTube friends. We're going to say goodbye now. And we're going to... Anna's going to edit this video. And by the time it goes out, mum will be way better. And by the time it's next week, I think you'll be back to mum. So thank you for bearing with John and I for um, filling in while um, Mum's been feeling dizzy. But yeah, you'll see us on the gun again on the channel, I'm sure soon. But perhaps not quite such a long section just of us. It's raining. And we'll show you the allotment again in the spring or in the winter, whenever you want to see what's happening here. Um, Mum comes all the time, doesn't she? Okay. We show Grandma up here. But we're going to take some flowers to Grandma tomorrow morning and see how she's doing. And 
I'm sure she'd be loads better than she was even the other day. Oh, look at that big red pepper there. Look, it's a big one. Yeah. <gasps> cool. Right. So we're going to say bye bye. And are we going to tell the YouTube friends that they should subscribe if they like Grandma's videos? They should, shouldn't they? Grandma. One more. Yeah. One more pepper. We could have that for tea. Do you want it? Yeah. Should we pick that pepper? There you go. Yummy. This one.